Excellent. I'm glad Chris has joined us. Hello, Chris. You, you, can, um, you can back me up with techie stuff if I get it wrong, hopefully. Oh, this is muted. <laughs> no, that's all right. If you raise your hand, um, Chris, if I ask for your input. Okay, everyone. Nice to see you all. Thank you for joining. Um, I won't go through the usual um, stuff that you have before a meeting, like where the toilets are, because I'm sure you all know. Um, so we've all been forced to work from home. And I reckon this is going to become the new norm because we're all going to love it so much. Um, I've, I've had a few people I've been talking to, I'm sure you all have, we've all reacted differently to it. Um, we've got three choices really. We either give up, stick our head in the sand and rely on the government, or we see this as an opportunity and make the most of it. And um, what I'm going to try and cover today is how I'm thinking of making the most of it, what you might be able to do, and if if and how we can use technology to help us do that. Now, this is why I've asked for Chris to pipe up if I've, um, I might need his help, because I'm not an IT expert anymore, although I used to work in IT, um, but I use a lot of technology myself, and uh, I work from home 80% of the time when I'm not out networking or in meetings, so this is my normal. So. Um, Hopefully I can give you all some pointers. Um, I've got two clients that I've experienced reacted totally, I think, in the wrong way to this. Um, one guy, he's got a, a big business. He provides healthcare equipment to people, um, mainly the elderly, um, some less able people that need wheelchairs, etc. cetera. Um, he's shut up shop, um, but most of his staff could work remotely. Um, he's got access to his CRM, they've all got mobiles, home phones, he's got, um, uh, he's got a VoIP system so they can all work from home effectively using their laptops or PCs, um, but he's shut up shop and he's waiting to see what the government are going to offer, so I don't agree with that, I don't know how you guys feel. Um, another company, they're in manufacturing, um, we've been talking to them about a new system, a new CRM, and they don't want to talk at the moment because they, it's not that they, they've got the money to do the job, but they, they, because they've shut down, they've shut down. Um, and I think it's just an ideal opportunity to do those sorts of things. So um, it, 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 how do we move forward? So I'm just going to talk about the opportunities that this is presenting us all. Um, Sales calls is, is one idea. I don't know how many of you have to sell. Um, some of you are in jobs, but a, the majority of us here are entrepreneurs. We run our own businesses and it's an ideal time to actually make those calls, to actually connect with people, connect with prospects, um, contacts, people on LinkedIn. However, you know, just make those calls and make the most of it. Well, we have to. Um, the I asked the lady this morning when she called me if I could use the, her as an example and she said yeah no problem. I, so there were, she was from Sandler Training and um, they're, they're running some, this is the first thing I'm going to suggest, they're running a, uh, a, a series of webinars called I Love Cold Calling. So if anyone wants to freshen up their skills for free, Courtney I don't think you guys will need to but um, they, they, they are offering some free training for people who want to improve their cold calling techniques. Um, so I'll be given a list of, um, things from here, links and contacts, etc. Um, so you can follow up on anything you want to. Um, next thing is let's all do more one-to-ones. Um, everyone in Paul's groups, my B&I groups, I think, it's a great opportunity to get those one-to-ones in and really get to know the people you know. Um, one-to-ones, great way of doing it. And what's different to doing it virtually than doing it over um, and doing it face-to-face -face and spreading our germs with each other. So let's get those one-to-ones going. Um, another thing we could do is contact current and past clients, catch up with them, see how they're doing, see how they're being affected. Um, and see if, if you can help them in any way. But like we talked with um, 
what, what was the lady that did the talk the other day, Paul? Um, Jessica. That's yes, right, yes, Jessica. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, they, I, d I don't know how many LinkedIn requests everyone's got. I've been getting loads over the last few days. Um, loads of LinkedIn requests, loads of emails about the COVID. I'm just fed up with it, and I'm sure you all are. So let's just catch up with people with no no agenda, and um, things will things will come from it. I'm sure they will. Um, another thing we we could all do is start to start to use LinkedIn a little bit more, but again, without trying to use it. As an it is an opportunity. We all know it's an opportunity. It's a networking platform. Um, it's a way of connecting with people. But try and connect with people in a meaningful way. And I've I've been given um, I've been given something from someone that I think you guys might find useful. That he and I have found really useful for connecting to people. And it's really simple. And it's literally just introducing yourself. Um, say hi, whatever their name is. I saw your profile on LinkedIn. Thought I'd touch base. I see you're in whatever industry they're in. Um, I'd love to connect if you're open to it. And then if they connect, follow up with a second message. Don't go straight into sales pitch like a lot of people do, but just say, great to connect with you. Just curious, would you be open to having a brief chat when convenient as I'd like to make a real connection? Um, and that's been really effective. I'll share that with you in, in the notes so um, you've all got it. I'm working from paper here. You can't see that, can you? Oh, that's good. See, that's my fake background. Um, if you, I, I, this, I was going to tell you all about this later, but this background I've got, I haven't got a swanky London office, as you probably all gathered. Um, but <laughs> if you look on the on your screens, on the bottom left-hand corner, you've got a thing that says "Stop Video." If you're in full screen mode. If you click on the arrow next to that, you can actually choose a virtual background. So I was going to save it to the end, but um, I'll see if you're all playing around with it because I'll see your backgrounds change. So whether you're not listening or not, whether you're listening or not. OK, so. So we've all got concerns about working at home. Um, we might have restrictions. So those that are office based most of the time, they might be finding it hard to get hold of their data. Um, they might not be able to log into their CRM or pick up their documents. If you can't, there's, there's usually a way around it. There's, there's remote desktops, there's a way of connecting to servers, there's a way of putting your stuff in the cloud or getting your IT guys to do that for you. Um, Chris, hand up if, you, uh, if you're happy to help people with that. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's loads of IT experts about. Chris is, Chris is on the call, so... I better recommend him, um, otherwise he'll shoot me when I next see him. Um, so <laughs> there's there's loads of ways of getting your data, connecting to your apps and your documents. Another concern might be the speed of connectivity. Um, again, there's solutions to that. Um, Mark Costa's on the call, I believe, and he had a similar issue and where he's been changing telecom provider and he lost access to his in his uh, broadband right at this time what a, what a bit of bad luck and um he spoke to a company called btt many of you might know them and they've they've set him up with um, a data only sim card and we had a zoom call and it was it was perfect so there's a way if you're worried about your speed or your connectivity obviously everyone's here they, they probably don't have those problems but if you know anyone that is struggling Put them on to myself, Paul, or BTT, and we'll be able to connect them with someone that knows what they're doing on the telecoms and the data connectivity side. Um, apps, there's lots of apps to help you remote working. I'm going to be talking about a few of them shortly. And the final one, which is probably the most serious concern most of us are going to have, is security. Um, usual tips apply. Um, use strong passwords. Um, go and have a look at your passwords. Make sure they're not all the same. Make sure they're long passwords and um, ones that can't easily be guessed. So use characters, numbers, symbols as much as you can. And you don't have to try and remember them because there's something else I'm going to be talking about shortly. Is someone's got an offer where you can secure your passwords safely 
um, three, four, six months. So that should be long enough until all this is over. Um, also, there's data encryption. So if you're worried about people seeing your data or um, hacking onto it or whatever they do, there's, there's VPNs. I don't know if you heard about VPNs, virtual private networks. Basically, what they do is they encrypt your data at both ends. So it's just a load of garbage. That if you communicate with me, it'll be a load of garbage anyway, but this makes it a load of garbage that's actually going across the internet. So people can't hack in and um, have a look at what you're saying or doing. Um, there's loads of offers on them. Again, I'll share them with you, but um, NordVPN, which is one of the, the better known ones, they've got 70% off at the moment. I think that's about to run out tonight. I'm not trying to sell for them, but it, it, it looks like it's about to run out tonight. Um, there's a few others. Um, there's one called Surfshark, and that's discounted to £1.49 a month um, for a two year subscription. So that's worth looking into if you're looking at a VPN. I'm certainly going to do that myself now. Um, so Apart from that, cybersecurity wise, um, make sure your antivirus is up to date. Um, if you've got a, a firewall on your PC, make sure your Windows is up to date. Um, if you've got a Wi-Fi router, make sure it's got a decent password and software's up to date. And speak to Chris if you're worried, or if you need any other um, help. I'll share with you a resource on something called CrowdStrike um, that helps um, understand cybersecurity and how, can, how we can improve our security over these worrying times. Okay, so I'm going to move on to um, free apps that are available at the moment. Um, Zoho are offering a collection of remote working apps at the moment, that's zoho.com and uh, they're offering Zoho Showtime which is an engagement and training tool. So it's a tool that you can use to help if you're training somebody. Um, they've got Zoho Writer or Zoho Sheet, but I wouldn't recommend that. I'd use Google, Google Sheets or Google Doc if you don't have Word um, or Excel. Um, Zoho Click, which is an instant messaging platform. Um, but I, I use Messenger. I don't know about you lot, you probably do. Um, Zoho Show, which is like PowerPoint, Zoho Meeting, which is their version of um, Zoom, um, Zoho Sprint, now this is a good one, it's if you're involved in project management at any time or you have com complicated projects you're running, um, Zoho Sprint uh, is an agile project management package. Um, Zoho Lens, that's uh, remote support software, which you might find useful if you've got any elderly relatives or um, technophiles that might need you to dial into their computer and help them with stuff that they can't do themselves. That's called Zoho Lens. Um, there's Zoho Work Drive, which is a document management tool, and Zoho Projects. Um, that's Zoho's offering. Uh, there's something called Box Crypta which um, allows end-to-end -end data encryption. That might be a bit too much for us lot. I wouldn't be needing it. I use Dropbox, which has it anyway. Um, but if, if anyone needs it, it's there. Um, something called DH2I, um, which is networking software, um, so it, which allows you to access your work computer from home. So, if you're normally office based and now you're home based, you can access your work computer using that software. Um, again, I'll be sending this lot out to you. I'm not really going into too much detail of them, but these are all things I've found that you can get for free at the moment. Uh, one password, that's the thing where you, if, you, if you decide to tighten up your password, you can store them there. They've got rid of the 30 day trial and now it's a six month free pass for that. Um, 8x8 eight eight video meetings, free to all users, um, offering 80 plus local dial-in numbers. So if you have a call only conference call facility you need, that's the one to use for that. 
um, sorry, it's video meeting. So why you wouldn't lose, use Zoom, I don't know, but if Zoom gets too busy, it's another option. Um, Google's expanding its offerings, um, like Hangout Meets. Um, so you can, they're allowing you to host larger and longer meetings with up to 250 participants. Um, and you can live stream to 100,000 viewers. So that's Google Hangout Meets. And Microsoft is offering free for six months Microsoft Teams. So if you work with other people collaboratively, Microsoft Teams is great for using that. We use that in our business for managing the products we put in place. And um, it, Microsoft Teams is really, really useful. It's handy for collaborating on projects. Asana is another one, but I don't think they're doing anything free at the moment like Microsoft are. So Microsoft Teams is, uh, is a good option. Nearly finished on the on the list of things. Um, Quip is another one, which again is um, helping you remote collaborate work with people. That's called Quip, and you can collaborate on spreadsheets with chat and uh, documents and spreadsheets while chatting with people. So you can open a open a spreadsheet or a document and actually talk people through the changes you're making without using something like the Zoom screen share. But again. Why would you do that? But they're offering it free to any organisation until September the 30th. Um, I don't know how familiar everyone is with Zoom. One to one, Zoom is free all the time anyway. So if you're not using Zoom already, you can use it for one to one chats. You've got absolutely unlimited time if it's one to one. So you can chat for as long as you like. Um, and it's, but it's limited to 40 minutes for three or more people up to 100. And I've showed you how to change your fancy background if you want to. Um, I've done it because I've got a blank wall behind me, which is pretty boring normally. Um, so tips for remote working. Key thing is to maintain a routine. So try and maintain a routine as if you're going into the office, if you're used to going into the office. So if you're used to starting at nine o'clock every day, don't be tempted to lay in, try and start at nine o'clock every day. Um, if possible, have boundaries in place. Um, I've banned my daughter from coming in here when I'm on a video call and the door's closed and so she won't come in. Hopefully she won't now and show me up, but she knows not to come in when I'm talking or on the phone or I've got the door closed. So um, if you've got a separate room, that's great. If you don't, just designate an area um, where it's your sacred area for work and don't let people disturb you when you're in that area. Um, be organised. Um, that's funny coming from me because I'm one of the most disorganised people out, but try and get more organised, especially the way things are at the moment. We're all up in the air. We don't know what we're doing in half the time. Um, and it, it's hard to work in this different way because it, it's just un unnerving. So try and block out chunks of your day where you're going to focus on certain tasks. Um, use a default diary. If there's things you tend to do every day, every week, every month, chunk them in your diary so they're always there and you can always refer to them. And always allow for the inevitable chaos that's going to occur. Um, there's always some sort of emergency or disaster. So allow that in your diary. So if things do occur, then you can cope with them. If you fill your diary like nine o'clock till nine o'clock at night, then you, you're never going to allow for any chaos. And chaos always happens, especially in my household. Um, talked about having a designated workspace. Take breaks. Um, this is really rich coming from me because I've not left my desk until since since eight o'clock this morning. I've been sitting here and I haven't literally got up and moved. There's my lunch plate. Oh, you can't see that. There's my lunch plate still here. Brought lunch up and I just haven't moved. So um, don't be like me. Try and take a break as regularly as you can. Apparently 45% of remote workers take less than an hour lunch break while 25% work through lunch. I'm one of the 25%, I'll admit. Um, it's a quick way to feel burnt out. Um, and I do feel burnt out, as you might see how tired I look. <laughs> 
Um, final thing, uh, no, there's a couple more, is be social. So, you know, get on the phone, make sure you talk to people. Um, I've had two calls today that I, I made and that I instigated um, catching up with people. They were in my default diary before I started any work. So I knew I was going to make those calls and I made those calls, had a chat. It makes you feel better. Um, so break up your day with calls, even if, they, even if they're sales calls. Um, and also reach out fast. If you've got a problem, someone met, you know upsets you or um, says something or a client pulls out or whatever, something bad happens in the day, reach out either to people in your network or family or something. Just, just say, if you're not in the office, you usually will shout out something or have a moan or whatever. But if you're not in the office, then you might have to just pick up the phone and have a chat with someone. I think we're all more receptive to taking calls now um, and helping each other. Finally, dress for success. Um, I've got some friends that joke about the fact that I often do my work in my pajamas. Um, and I do, because you know, often I don't have to get up and dress up and take a call or do a video conference or whatever. Um, but if you're making if you're making calls, business calls, and you're talking to business people, follow Paul's example, put on your branded um, shirt or put on your suit or whatever, just so you feel good, have a shower, um, and you do feel better when making those calls. The way you dress can definitely impact your mood. Right, I'm nearly finished. Final paragraph. How can we turn this situation into an opportunity? Um, and that's where I will open the floor to everybody else. Right, okay. Uh, thanks, Adam. Thanks for mentioning the, the, mentioning the branded shirt. I'm naked from the waist down, so I won't. <laughs> so, uh, guys, the easiest way to do this is I'm not going to unmute you all because it will be absolute chaos. Uh, so, if you've got something you want to add, an observation, anything like that, if you can either tap something in, type something in the chat, or uh, raise your digital hand if you found that, or just sort of wave at the screen because I'm looking at all of you now, so I should be able to see if you've got something to say. So, does anybody? Right, Mark, let's. So I'll just unmute Mark, hold on a sec, oh, lost him, technology. Mark, floor is yours. Uh, yeah, I was just going to endorse what uh, Dan was saying about um, structure and discipline. You know, I, this, is, uh, this is literally just a, it's just started being the seventh year for us doing this. Um, and I work from home all the time. And it is, it is I think the first, when I first uh, stopped the contract uh, where I was before, that um, I think I didn't bother setting my alarm. I got up when I wanted, I just sort of drifted around to some stuff and then, you know, uh, and after a few weeks you realize it's just not productive. You know, it, it wasn't working. So um, I have a, I have a, a, a calendar, a, a weekly calendar and each day I do different things. So I do client work in the morning. I do, I do um, calls on a Tuesday afternoon. I do marketing on a Monday afternoon. And you don't have to be obviously that, um, rigid about it but if you can find I think you just need to find some structure that you can replicate day after day week after week without it being troublesome the same as with the networking you know, no point doing 50 events in the first month and then finding you can only do one the next month you've got to find a structure and a discipline that works for it um, try and eliminate the distractions um, and use as as Damon said use as much software that's out there as you can to try and organize your day what i have found with software is that you can sometimes overdo it with having lots of different bits you've got to analyze what works and is more efficient and make sure you don't take on things that make you less efficient overall um, but yeah it's, it's, it, there's lots of things lo there's lots of tools to find a way that works for you okay thanks mark uh looks like chris has got his hand up hold on oh chris Hi everyone. Um, I was going to also uh, just endorse what Damon said about the apps. Um, Microsoft Teams, I did a presentation to SEMLEP yesterday morning. Um, all three Microsoft Teams works really, really well. Um, and I've been using Teams along with Office 365 and SharePoint uh, for quite some time now. So working from home for me is second nature. I can work literally from anywhere. Um, the background obviously looks like I'm in a server room. I'm not, I'm just on my dining room table at the moment. Um, but yeah, the, what the stuff Damon said about uh, if you want to chat about Microsoft Office 365 and SharePoint, I'm happy to have a chat with that either 
later on, on uh, in a one to one or offline. Um, just give me a shout. But uh, no, Dame is right. There's so many, so many great tools out there to help you work from home. It's it's time to get in there and start using them. I think now we are going to see, as someone said earlier in the chat, um, we're going to see a big influx of people. Uh, it was Ella or Ella or who said it. Big influx of people going to start working from home once we're on the other side of this. Uh, it will lead to some in, uh, heavy investment from the government into the infrastructure because at the moment, BT is recalling 35 to 65 percent increase in home use, uh, and obviously businesses use is dropping down. Uh, so it's a great time to start working from home and look at uh, things for the future. Um, by all means, have a chat with Damien about what he suggested, and I'll I'll happy to have a chat with people as well. But that actually is a, back, a picture of your back bedroom, isn't it, behind you? It's the garden shed, mate. It is the garden shed. I knew that's, it. Right, that's the uh, that's the cloud. If anyone's ever wondered what the cloud looks like. <laughs> okay, right. Uh, does anybody else have any uh, comments? Yeah, I on? think Ella's got a question. Okay, hold on, Ella. I'll just unmute you, Ella. Oh, I think you've muted yourself. You're not. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Hi, Ella. Hi, everyone. Hi, Damien. Uh, it's good to good to see you here. Um, yeah, I actually work in social media marketing, um, and I just actually wanted to say something about the marketing side of things. Please do. Is that okay? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I don't know what everyone's business is, um, but if you are running um, a small business. Um, the, I think the main thing is, is that obviously we've all been absolutely shell-shocked by everything that's happened over the last couple of weeks. And more and more that we feel that, you know, we're, we're lacking, contr losing control and we're not being able to sort of, you know, do what we usually do. But one thing I would say is try to remember that your audience is still out there. You know, the people who you usually sell to, your customers, your clients, we're all in this boat together. Um, and, you know, a lot of people are going to have more, more time to sit and listen to you. So um, if you are, um, you know, if you are thinking, oh, I've actually, you know, I've, I've got, I've got, it's not necessarily about having a sales pitch, but having a marketing pitch. So thinking about your questions that your audience are usually asking you. I know Damien will really love this because it's all about SEO, isn't it, Damien? It's all about what questions are your audience or your potential clients asking? So they're looking to you for the answers. And if you can go on your LinkedIn page, maybe especially, and um, you know, really start to utilize LinkedIn, um, then, um, and 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 it's it's, it's not about putting sales pitches out there. It's about saying, you know, answering people's questions. Um, so, but I just think it's about visibility. We still need to be visible now because we don't know if if we fall out of people's radar, of people's radar now. When it does come back to normality, um, we will um, will have been forgotten about. Whereas if we've kept in people's ourselves in people's radar through this this sort of difficult time, people will be coming, coming back to us and wanting to buy from us once this is all done. Great point. <laughs> Damien? Yeah, now more than ever, we need to be more vocal um, yeah. and visible to people we know. Um, okay. not, in a, not in a sales sense, but in a no. human sense. Yeah, exactly. That's it, exactly. Because this, this it, what, I mean, I've been saying to people on my social media channels, it's about communication and, you know, and we are all in this, in this big, massive community. And then the business community is, you know, is some, is another support network that we need help from each other, don't we? We all need to help each other at the minute. So if we keep talking to each other, you never know who might in two or three months time think, oh, I remember that person going online and doing that Facebook Live or that LinkedIn post or offering that webinar or whatever it was that they offered. And I'll go back to them, actually buy from them. I think, it's a, I think that's a great point, Ella. I think we've been discussing this in some of the other webinars that we've had. Um, and overwhelmingly, people said, you know, don't be profiteering during this. No. Don't, be, don't be pushing all your, you know, silly offers and things like that out at the moment. Uh, there's a balance to it, I think. You know, you, in some circumstances, you might have to reduce your pricing in the current climate. Yeah, exactly. Um, but, you know, don't, don't be going uh, mad on it. Um, communication is key and lead with advice. You know, you, yeah. you've all got things that you can advise people in your own area of expertise. And yeah. I mean, you'll see now 
to be that person that's helping. It's really why we started these webinars. You know, we, I wanted to reach as many people and give them as much advice as possible, as quickly as possible, uh, just so they don't feel down. It's quite easy in a climate like this just to go into your shell, yeah. uh, you know, get the next level of lockdown and, and don't communicate. So that's great advice. You know, you've still got to, you still got to be out there uh, connecting with people, and there's probably more opportunity just to chat with people. As you said, they're they're probably less busy than they normally want. Well, yeah. this, this week and next, they might be a little bit more busy, sort of wondering what's going on. But I think when it calms down, they'll have space. I think so. No, good point. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for your contribution. Right, Margo, let's get you. Margo, the floor is yours. Yeah, I just wanted to say something uh, following on from from Ella. You made some really good points, um, Ella, and I think um, you need to bear in mind that there's always going to be somebody who's going to do well in any climate, whether it's an economic recession or whether it's the coronavirus. Um, I mean, if you uh, have a niche, say, in the, the leisure sector, then <laughs> you're going to have to change. You can't keep going and there's no point in marketing to um, the, the leisure industry because they're not going to be listening. They're going to be so worried about their business. Um, but, you know, there are companies at the moment, like food companies, um, they're doing well, everybody's got to eat. So maybe just change your niche um, and look at the sectors that are doing really well. All I wanted to say. Okay, thanks, Marco. Uh, anybody else? Let's just open it up, see if anybody's frantically waving or put any comments. Can't see anyone. Um, I've, there's something else I forgot to mention. If you if you are stuck with not a lot to do, um, there's um, there's a website called U D E M Y U D E M Y. Um, they're offering massive discounts on at the moment on some of their training. So if you want to brush up on any skills, um, try Udemy. Um, you know, especially if you can't do your normal work. Sue, I think you've got a question. Hold on a minute. Bear with. Uh, where's Sue? Uh, 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 oh, there you are, Sue. Of course you're there. What am I doing? Mad me. Thank you. Uh, you're up. <laughs> I have got a question, um, but just to add on to what Damien just said, I know the OU has, um, is it Open Learn? And most of their courses are free. So um, if people want to learn some things from the OU, they've got lots of um, courses on there which are totally free. Um, the question I had was, it, and it might be a bit technical, Microsoft Teams, um, I've got a conference, a, a, a call with somebody who's set that up, but I haven't got it. So is that going to work for me or do, do I need to do something? Yeah, um, Chris, do you want to answer that? I think you can just download it from teams.microsoft.com, something like that. Chris. Oh. Yeah, well, exactly as Damon just said. Um, if you follow the link that they would have sent you in the um, yeah. calendar diary, it'll um, take you to the website and you should be able to uh, download it. If not, just Google Microsoft Teams, download. Okay. Okay. Um, you might just need to set up a free account, but that'll be about it. Fabulous. Thank you both. There you go. Sorted. Uh, anybody else? Uh, actually, I'll just jump in back on that. If you do get stuck with it, give me a, a shout beforehand and I'm happy to uh, set up a remote session with you just to run through it. Thank you, Chris. That's great. That Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. I hope, I hope that wasn't too boring for you all. So um, I, I know so when you're talking about techie stuff, it's hard to make it really interesting. I'm not normally that boring. I'm on board. Uh, I'm saying nothing, Damien. 